Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's antiwar.com. Cell 411 is a free app for Android and iOS that replaces government controlled 911. Cell 411 allows you to preset a group of friends or private organizations to show up in any emergency. Cell 411 is a nightmare for the state because it proves their so called services aren't needed. Cell 411 has had thousands of installs, and of course, it's covered by the Bipcot No Government License. Cell 411 because your friends won't shoot you when you're in trouble. Without the government, who would build the emergency services? You and Cell 411. Get it today at Get Cell. 411.com that's get cell 411.com hey dave uh, um they're not called uh, uh what did you call it reed moth reed rothbard they're yeah. called yeah um hail murray's hail murray's hail Mur- <laughs> you have to, yeah you have to say say your hail murray's I need you to say you rub, five hail murray's well you rub silver bullion Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 101st episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. As always, we are brought, we are covered by a BIPCAT no government license. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at BIPCAT.org. So this week, we are brought to you again by Fiend Phone and brought to you again by the Freedom Bread and, Bre- Bre- uh, Bed and Breakfast app, which we are going to be talking to one of the main creators of that of that app uh, coming up in this episode. Uh, I am Jeremy, joined as always by Dave. Uh, Andre, yo, yo, yo. Andre uh, is out sick this week after we just invited him to be a full-time member. Then all of a sudden he just bails <laughs> on us. Thanks a lot, Andre. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. It's like the girl that gives you the fake phone number, man. Seriously. And so, and uh, as I mentioned this week, we have Ben Stone with us. Ben is also known as the Bad Quaker. He, the legendary Ben Stone. Yes. The legendary. <laughs> get it right. Legendary. And, and he is a he is actually a past guest of ours. He we had him on way back on episode fifteen, which seems like eons ago at this point. So Ben, <laughs> thank you for joining us. How are you? Hey, I'm very well, and thank you for inviting me back to the Church of the Immaculate Secession, <laughs> where the good, right, and reverend Jeremy and Dave are here to welcome the congregation. Yes, yes, that is, that, that, that took on a whole <laughs> oh, new... Oh, that was great. I, I've had that page up for a long time. That took on a whole new life by that, that meme by Travis. That was That's a our bumper. Thing, yeah, thing that's of our beauty. new bumper, It's <laughs> our so. new bumper. Uh, so yeah, well, yeah, we, well, we would have had you back on sooner, but you know, you had retired shortly after, or actually shortly before <laughs> you, you officially retired, I think just after we had you on. And so I didn't want to bug you yeah. again. And now, but now you're back with a vengeance. You've been, you've been writing some lately and you put a book out, which we have talked about on this show, uh, extensively. <laughs> and I try to promote it as often as I can. Uh, I also get yelled at by Michael for bringing it up on the fiends all too, too often because, you know, he's still, he's still afraid of it. Um, but now, now you have, now you have the new project. We put it on our RSS feed. Yes, this is true. We have it. It is. Although for some reason, I don't know what happened with Stitcher or something went wrong and only, only two of the parts actually went out, but I know it's on our RSS feed. It can be listened to through all the other services. And uh, yeah, we were trying to get that out as many in, in, in as many places as possible. So why not? And, you know, we had plenty of space to offer. Uh, so. Yeah, it's so well put together. Go listen to it if you haven't, guys. Please yes. go back and listen to it. Give it a shot. Listen to the I first two and then... Oh, I was just going to say, I appreciate you guys doing that. And I appreciate Jeremy, Jeremy, Jeremy and all the folks that, uh, that helped in the recording of that. That was a huge project that people had asked me if I was going to record it. And, you know, at the time, I was like... I don't know if I'll be alive in a month, so probably not. But, <laughs> but I'm much better now. Oh. So 
<laughs> wow, it, that is so glad to I'm hear. I'm feeling better now uh, from me because uh, you're you're one of the people that I first uh, kind of jumped into when I f- jumped into this whole anarchy thing. <laughs> uh, I I just somehow stumbled across Ben Stone and and I was I'm glad, <laughs> you know he he him along with Bill Bupert and you know a few other are people I'm glad I ran into first essentially uh, when I started reading about this philosophy. Uh, and, uh, as far as putting out, you know, spoken content and I, I, I tell everybody, Hey, uh, if you really want to hear some good stuff, go listen to any episode of the bad Quaker podcast, just go download <laughs> a random one. Yep. Some of them are pretty bad, but, but <laughs> you know, Bill influenced my thinking a lot because, uh, I really was in a place where it's like, man, we have no chance against this thing. We're just, we have to just basically huddle down and wait till it kills itself and images in my mind of what the state would look like as it killed, you know, because it's, it's going to starve itself to death in many ways, and it's got, like, all these flaws built into it. This is a discussion that um, Higgs, Bob Higgs and I, had over the phone several times where, where we disagree. And my argument is that the state is so unstable. Now, it has an advantage that it can morph and change its shape and change its head and change, you know, some, change some aspects. Temporarily yeah. collapse, yeah. Yeah, I can do that and pick itself back up again. But um, overall, the structure of the state is extremely, in my mind, unstable. And at some point, it's just going to catastrophically turn on itself and just start annihilating things. I I said it today on or yesterday on Facebook. The state is a LARP. If you don't know what a LARP is, it's a live action role play. Right now, there are too many people LARPing that the state exists, and eventually it's not going to be the same. I bet. I bet you. We're winning, guys. I can't. I, I just I just have to tell you guys, more, peop, more and more people are waking up to the in-depth libertarianism of the whole thing, wow. and it's catching on. People are like, so. hey, yeah, this is this is kind of I think they're waking up when they're realizing, holy shit, I'm being taxed to pay first three hundred million dollar studies why lesbians are fat. You know, like <laughs> this none of this makes sense. You know, and eventually with the internet and the way customer service works right now, government can never compete at that level. And it's the that that veil is getting ripped wide open uh, every month almost. <laughs> yeah. Well hope, it's hope. true. Yeah. Hopefully it continues and, you know, the the way, I mean, I, I've argued with people about the same type of thing and it's, you know, I, I get accused of t- talking, you know, thinking the state's just good, the, the state, which to me is, is just the idea, the belief in the, in the you know, I, I put it as the state is that. We got to get more people LARPing that they're anarchist. <laughs> well, I don't want, no, I don't want them to do that. That's I want it. them to actually understand it. I don't want them to just role play it. Uh, but that's, but, <laughs> well, but, yeah. but that's, but that's what I'm saying though. The, I, I get accused of thinking it's just going to go away and I don't, I don't believe that's the case at all, but I believe in doing things to help make it obsolete by creating systems and, and, and services outside of its bounds that help people like what we have been here to talk about today, which is, you know, the freedom BNB app, which something like this kind of exists already with Airbnb. But this is a slightly different idea geared towards more like people like us who care not just about convenience, but also care about things like security and, you know, privacy Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So before we get too much further away down the road, we should probably get to that (laughs) subject. So, Ben, if uh, if you don't mind, you want to fill our guest our, our guest you're the guest <laughs> do you want to fill our listeners in on what what you have going wait on? we're not on the bad quaker podcast right now <laughs> you know Man. airbnb airbnb is a really good app i've never used it personally but i know several people who who rely on it regularly and it appears to really be good i've snooped around on their site and it looks pretty cool i have nothing against airbnb but then again you know if i was like if i was the manufacturer of lincoln's uh, let's say just as an example mm-hmm. then um i would uh i would not be opposed to somebody owning a cadillac it would just mm-hmm. be that i would make sure my lincoln was better than the cadillacs and i think that's what we're <laughs> yeah. doing i think we're going to produce something that is drastically different from Airbnb and in 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 the market that we f- are looking for it's going to be drastically better than Airbnb because Airbnb works as a middleman between the host and the traveler so if you're traveling and you pull up your Airbnb app 
and you search for a place that you want to stay and you find it, then Airbnb charges a fee to the traveler and that creates a trail of records of the interactions. And then Airbnb pays the host whatever their percentage is for for hosting the traveler. And so yeah. not only has Airbnb created a record of the of the travels of the traveler and the transactions of the travel traveler, mm -hmm. but they have also created a record of of who has stayed in your house and how much they paid you. And that's the kind of thing that kind of gives freedom-oriented people the willies, you know? Like, we don't really want a middleman in a transaction. We People who understand agorism and understand markets and understand things like privacy, we understand that there is never a need yeah. for a third party to overseer a transaction between two yeah. free individuals. Uh, yeah, you're, so that's you're really the direction. Right on that. Now, we do have... Uh, we're working with Roberts and Roberts Brokerage, which is a really great company with really good people in it, and to try to make to also try to make uh, our app better than Airbnb. What we're doing with Roberts and Roberts is we're hoping to have a, a a second app or a way that you can communicate with Roberts and Roberts, so that the traveler, let's say the traveler, would really like to to not pay in check or or in you know a visa card or something like that let's say the traveler really wants to travel and pay with bitcoin or litecoin or something else but the the homeowner the host maybe they don't want to you know maybe they don't want a bit maybe they don't like bitcoin there are people in the world that don't like bitcoin that don't trust it that think it's like cia money or something still well fine have, whatever still, yeah, still people have no idea what it is yeah, exactly. And some some very freedom oriented people have no concept of it and don't really want to know about it because it's just not in their wheelhouse. Yep. So that's it's, fine. Go it's ahead. So simple. Dave. The 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 easiest way I've ever heard Bitcoin explained, it well is it's just the the price you have to pay the indiscriminate price you have to pay to put something across the blockchain. So that leads to the question: What is the blockchain? Well, the blockchain is a distributed ledger that anyone can add anything to. That's but that it. scares some people, you know, people yeah. who still can't figure out how to do the. Well, uh, you could have. You could, dude, you could Dave, have. Dave, you, you lost. You lost some people at distributive ledger. So you know, like <laughs> okay. yeah, you're right. Because well, a couple a of years, a couple years ago, I didn't even a, understand that. So you know, like well, I, imagine a big blank sheet of paper that has a billion lines, well, a quadrillion, gazillion lines really, on it, and it really costs not, a certain amount of money to put something on each line, and each line is one transaction. Right. Well, er, that that's a paper trail, right? That anyone can look on and verify. So you're gonna see stuff like people's. Deeds, houses, uh, marriage contracts, uh, business contracts. You're going to see all this. Like people's, uh, your people will walk up and be like, "Yo, check my my blockchain account well, or whatnot." Here's all my verifications that people have signed off on, and, and and anyone will be able to go look at it. And that's where we're moving, and no one controlling it. The government controlling something is the scary part. When government can't control it, that's when it's just like air. Yes, you know? but again, that, that that's for us. We understand that. The, the, the people that are afraid of Bitcoin or don't understand it or don't care to understand it, they think differently than that. They they think in the opposite direction. But again, that that's a separate discussion. <laughs> that's kind of taking away. I don't the, what we don't I, I, I do take for granted that most of our, our fans are and our listeners are at least aware of Bitcoin. So we don't really have to go into that and I don't wanna take away from what Ben was trying to say. So you were saying, Ben, that you were you you with working with Roberts or Roberts in order if people do want to use this service, but somebody else doesn't want to take it. That's that's where we were. Right. So if the traveler wants to use Bitcoin, but the homeowner would, let's say they'd rather have silver um, or gold, but silver is more common for small transactions. Ooh. So so uh, let's say they want to have silver, but the traveler's like, dude, I'm going to be staying two weeks in Cleveland. I'm not, I don't want to carry two weeks worth of silver with me. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, if, you know, that's like what, 14 ounces maybe or double that? Who knows how much you're going to be spending? So he doesn't want to like go through, I mean, sometimes you might even have to go through the airport or customs or something. Now explain why you've got 14 ounces of, of silver in your luggage. Oh, oh, no problem. We just seized it. You don't have it anymore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> explanation. You don't need an explanation. We're just going to, we're just going to uh, alleviate you of your burden. Thanks for but the so, monies. 
<laughs> but so the Roberts and Roberts app that we're that we're hoping to develop will take care of that because the traveler wants to let's say the traveler wants to use Federal Reserve notes, but the homeowner doesn't want to take those things. So they just log on to Roberts and Roberts, and Roberts and Roberts makes the exchange, and the guy who wants to pay in one thing pays in that, and the and the person who wants to receive in something else receives in something else. And then the, the, the host can set up a, a system with Roberts and Roberts so that Roberts and Roberts either immediately um, mails them their physical bullion or, or, you know, uh, or sends them their uh, Bitcoin or whatever, how, however the transaction goes. Or, they can, or uh, Roberts and Roberts can hold on to it for like quarterly or yearly or whatever, whatever arrangement they want to make with Roberts and Roberts. And then, of course, how, do, how is money made in all this thing? Well... In that situation, Roberts and Roberts would, as as is the case, if you go and and buy silver from anybody, they take a little fee for transactions uh, exchanging that silver for sure. Federal Reserve notes. So Roberts and Roberts would take a little fee like that. Um, where Freedom Bed and Breakfast makes the money is we char we would be charging a monthly user fee so if you're gonna travel this month then you pop in get pay your user fee which would be very very low like maybe we haven't fully worked out all the pricing yet and we're open mm -hmm. for suggestions on that but you know like something like two dollars a month or something to use the app for the traveler and then there would be a, a a user free a user fee for the homeowner or the host to post their uh, property or their room or you know whatever they have they might be uh, it might not be a room they might have a vacant spot on their lot or they may have you know a nice slab next to their barn where an RV I'm not a could subscription park. for both yeah you could that's, if that, you that were, was the first thing that popped in my mind just yeah if you were a frequent tra traveler then you could just like you know pay by the year and get a discount that kind of thing oh yeah. sure um, so that's the idea. We want to be able to let people, let, let the homeowner or the host or, you know, whatever, maybe a field owner, let them and the traveler figure out the price. None of our business. We're not keeping a record of it. You could do we don't make a trail. Land. You, well, you sure. could. You could absolutely do it with farmland and campers and, yes. you know. Uh, imagine what it would be like. Let's say instead of having some kind of a freedom festival, where you, festival, not festival, festival, <laughs> where, where you have to, um, <laughs> where you have to rent a campground well in advance and do all this stuff, and you know maybe even pay like insurance money to the campground and mm -hmm. all this kind. Of, no, how about if just Larry just posts his farm because his field is not being used this this season, and uh, and everybody without any paper trail being you know, recorded, everybody slips Larry five bucks or something, and everybody goes out there, and you have your Freedom Festival, and there's no record of it, and there's no, I yeah. mean, it's just, yeah, know, that's actually, bingo. Yeah, that, that's, that's incredible, because that's exactly where my mind went when you started to say that, because I, you know, I've obviously been around this project a little bit, so I know, I, and I, I had been thinking about all these things, and you had mentioned the whole idea of, you know, renting camper space out on, you know, on your property, basically, for like, talking about theoretically just like one person or something. But yeah, as soon as you started to say that, I'm like, this is a perfect way to get festivals started. <laughs> this is a perfect way yeah, to get farmer in me just jumped well, inside yeah. when I thought about it though. Well, no, it make uh, it makes sense, Dave. I mean, cause you, we, you and I, we've been talking about trying to get our own festival up and running for over a couple of years now. And we just haven't been able to nail down a place or, you know, find something that actually works, but something like this would help us. <laughs> This is beautiful. Yeah, think of the from the par farmer's point of view. You've got a field that's not going to be producing money this no, season. No, no, I'm talking about people leasing out farm, farm land. Like, if you have a bunch oh. of land, you're like, I don't care if somebody was farming on this. I'll put this up as anyone who wants to come farm on this, as long as they're abiding these restrictions or whatever, they can farm on this land. And that's you would a good make idea. A, this, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. This way, you could organize agorist farming networks out of the yin yang. Yeah. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, that's and you could even work out things with uh, uh, farmers markets, where um, you know, rather than paying for a, a site at a farmers market, you could work out just some somebody kind host of, it once a month. A, a yeah. new farm hosted every month. Yeah, that'd be awesome. There's just no, Dude, there's so no end you once you start thinking app, about yeah. this. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I'm pretty I've been excited saying, about. If, if there was an Uber for food, or, or not for food, but for the land for farmers and stuff, I didn't really think about it this way. But this is essentially that. Yeah. 
It Absolutely. connects people that have land with people who need to use that land or, or people who need to sleep somewhere with people who have places that they would let people sleep. I mean, it's it's the handshake in between. And if it's all encrypted and you can get paid out in silver, I mean, this thing is insane. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm in. <laughs> yeah. Well, good. Yeah, Dave, it then takes you should, a minute. Then you should go to the Indiegogo campaign and donate, Dave. <laughs> let me know if you need any propaganda uh, help. We always need propaganda help. <laughs> That's but my yeah, specialty. It's, it, it's it's really bottomless, you know. I mean, it could be taken in so many directions, and it is uh, it, it it's really cool in the sense that to use the old word from my day, from the days when I was young, <laughs> to really think that you could do all this without asking anybody's permission, without creating <laughs> a record of it, and for the more um, uh, how do you put it politely, the commie leading lean, leaning the commie types leaning. out there. <laughs> <laughs> that, that hate yeah, corporations yeah. like to unusual amounts. Hey, well, why not give your money to, you know, Sally or Bill or Tom rather than the Hilton family, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, and like you said, yeah. the, the, I mean, even though, even though stuff like this already exists, I, I'm, not aware of a, I'm not aware of any others that take the encryption uh, aspect of it that seriously or – or, or are not third parties like you know like you're describing because e- even with the Roberts and Roberts connection they're still they're the third party but they're connecting you you got mm-hmm. like the Freedom B&B app still isn't a third party involved in that right it's somebody else so right yeah and and we have no there's no record even to subpoena it just doesn't exist because we don't make a record of it to begin with so like if first off we're all going to be it, the freedom bnb app is going to be hosted offshore so we're going to do everything we can to make sure that the federal government can't touch it no matter what but there's you know there's always things that leak through the cracks on stuff like that so we're just not going to create any uh any, any footprint of the transactions hmm. you can't follow what you can't see and smell and taste and hear Yes. Yeah, there's going to be a cryptocurrency that come out that could support this so easily. It, it just yeah. it's just going to take a time to come yeah. out and and get backing. Uh, it, just like fiat, just like any other currency, even just like silver or gold, folks, it all depends on what people believe it's worth because <laughs> all value is subjective and the f- the minute you realize that, you realize that communism can't work. Anyways, sl- that's yeah. my slide at communism for the, the episode. <laughs> we yes. also have another advantage um, one, uh, our top programmer right now, the guy that's doing all the coding at current time uh, and the app development is a guy named Dan Sullivan. And um, Dan sees avenues for this that I haven't even begun to talk about, like like a dating app and, and uh, you know, a food exchange like you were talking about. He, if you start talking to Dan about, you know, what potentials do you eventually want to develop once Freedom Bed and Breakfast is established, what do you want to do next with this same type of software? And he just goes. I mean, he is uh, he's pretty amazing, and he's got all kinds of ideas that we're going to develop uh, later on once, once we get this first one, uh, once we get its feet in the door. Yeah, I've, I, so I'm pretty excited. <laughs> uh, I am too. That's why I was I was happy to ask to to you know tag along a little bit and and throw my comments in here and there, and but at least get to hear what's going on and stuff like that. And and yeah, you're right. Dan definitely does have all these ideas, which is a lot of it. A <laughs> lot of exciting. it's over my head, but it's very it's very exciting. <laughs> and uh, I I think he, it's you know almost like a its own social network essentially i think was part of that whole you know with the dating apps and all that you know stuff but yeah you're right it's pretty much limitless and it's just a matter of getting a start and there's so many people out there that talk yeah. about being worried about their privacy and not trusting you know existing apps and also a lot of people who have a habit of bemoaning the fact that you know the government is in their way and prevents them from doing all these things and they want to be free but they just can't and it's like well here's a group of people that is trying to do something (laughs) to further that cause along (laughs) why don't you check them out and consider donating a little bit of money i mean I think I, I know I know from the Indiegogo campaign I know that I think there's a perk level as low as two a two dollar donation you get something, yeah. uh, you know so like yeah yeah it, it's it, a traveler perk yeah yeah and it really Here's the problem right for for you to get an app approved by Google you know by Google or or Android or Apple or any of those they have to be able to essentially backdoor and do whatever they want uh, to your app 
Not necessarily, and Google is nowhere near as bad as uh, I iPhone- as uh, dealing with Apple and the iPhone. Th- this is just what I've heard for secondhand. Just somebody who makes apps. It's like you have to basically go get all your shit patented before you even bring it to Google because the minute you do, they get in there and it they'll patent it before you can even think about patent it. Hmm. That's just it's basically in their shit when it's like when you say I agree to the terms, it's ba- <laughs> that's that's what's happening. Well, we'll get people on that to to find out and and search it out because we definitely have some people experienced in that in that Cause, direction. Because I have some apps in the in the wing, and we're we're you know trying not to get them jacked essentially. And I'm I'm internally struggling with the whole patent thing, but I'm thinking it's like one of those things where it if you don't use it, it will be used against you. So, in the sense of only doing it when it's you have to protect your own thing so it doesn't get used against you. I I, I it's just tough. Hey, can I uh, give a shout out to a, a new book that's out by a friend of mine? Oh, sure, absolutely. As long as you don't yell too loud. <laughs> um, there's a guy who's been a friend of mine for a while. Um, I was aware of him long before he was aware of me because I was reading one of his instruction manuals in about 1980. I'm going to say 89. No, no, closer to 1990. I was reading a, an instruction manual that he wrote that, is, that at the time was the definitive work on how to handle and install. Um, oh, wow, I'm stalling. What's the name of the wire that's made out of glass? <laughs> um, uh, fiber optic? Fiber optics, yeah. At the time, I was installing fiber optics, and his book was the definitive book on how to handle and insta- install fiber optics. His name is Paul Rosenberg, and he runs an uh, organization called Crypto Hippie, and they do a bunch of different things, including, um, uh, well, in- including security and stuff. But he has come out with a brand new book that just in the last couple months. It's called The New Age of Intelligence, and it's only 55 pages long. But anybody that's read my book, Sedition, Subversion, and Sabotage Field Manual Number 1, there's a, there's a little section in my book where I say, look, I'm not covering the sort of the hacker internet um, security level of this because, first off, I don't have the expertise. Second off, by the time that I researched it all out and wrote it all down, it would be out of date and, and people would laugh at it. So I'm not touching it. You know? So that's what I said in my book. But Paul has written this little 55-page book called The New Age of Intelligence, and he does that chapter that should have been in my book had I had the knowledge and the ability to do it. But he does it in a timeless way. The examples that he uses in there, would have they would have worked to somebody living in 1500 if he would have explained it to him, or it would work 50 years from now or 100 years from now if somebody uh, ex- explains it to someone. So... If you liked well, sub, sub, Sedition, Subversion, and Sabotage field, man, field Manual Number 1, then get a hold of Paul Rosenberg's book. It's on Amazon and stuff. We can probably get some links and that kind of thing. Yes, I will definitely put yeah. links for that in the show notes. And I actually, I've heard you mention that before, and I do, I have it on my list. It's just, I have a, you know, a list of books that I, I've already, I've already purchased <laughs> either on my Kindle or actually, you know, actual physical copies that are just stacking up you know, either physically or, or virtually. And they, they just keep growing and I don't get any closer to making them shrink. But I definitely want to get to that one because <laughs> since, since, I mean, since it's essentially, you know, like you've, you've put it kind of like an add on to your book, I figure, all right, I've already finished your book. So I guess technically I can go to that one and skip all this other stuff because it's kind of just, it's not like really <laughs> starting a new book. <laughs> so I'm definitely going to have to read that soon. Uh, but th- the way you talk about it, I think uh, I-, I definitely encourage other people to check it out as well because uh, it seems like it's going to be very helpful, especially in the coming days, you know, or, you know, years, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. So, all right. So, yeah, those things will all be in the show notes. So as as, as far as the, the app goes, you know, like like we have mentioned, there uh, there is an Indiegogo campaign, and I really wish more people would go check it out and consider giving even even a little bit uh because you know so so just so far as we've discussed i mean the possibilities are already endless and if you're somebody who yeah. values freedom and values privacy and all these things or at least claims to then i don't you know it seems, it makes, it seems to make sense to uh try to encourage people who are trying to bring this stuff to you that you would like to see in a free society you know 
because that that to me has always been how you get there. It's not a matter of uh, ignoring the state, the government, what, you know, whatever you want to call it, whatever the, the people that call themselves government. It's not ignoring it and hoping it goes away. It's ignoring it and doing things so it's not necessary. Because to me, it's just a belief that people hold that authority. Like the way I put it is, it's authority without consent. That's the belief. You, you believe that that's that's legitimate, right. and I I don't yeah. I don't accept that. I don't think it I don't think it holds up in any you know logically or you know morally or any way you want to look at it. So you know that yeah, that's the only thing double, that has to go away. It feels and, a double check. Yeah, and 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 once more people start to recognize that, you don't have to fight the state you don't have to hope it goes away it loses power when less people give it power by recognizing this illegitimate power (laughs) type deal you know so that's why i i it it drives me insane because i love to see anybody coming up with projects like this anything that can you know like we said even if there's something already in existence within the bounds of the state that does what you're looking to do well if you can do it better and you can find ways to improve especially with you know again security privacy all these things they're a big deal to a lot of people even the people that wouldn't consider themselves anarchists or wouldn't even understand what a what you know what a cryptocurrency is people do care about these things so if you are able to offer these type of services uh, you know, and the only thing holding it back is getting the project off the floor, you know, because, well, these things do cost money. <laughs> and when you, when you're not getting government grants or, you know, stu- or subsidies and stuff like that, <laughs> well, you know, this is what people talk about. And it just, it, it drives me insane when other people talk about it all the time and then don't want to, aren't willing to help out, you know. Uh, whether it's because they they're just all talk or whether it's because they're jealous because they didn't come up with the idea first like i mean come on how how else are we going to get through these things how 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 else do you get a foothold other than trying to support people that are actually doing this and i've said it so many times i do i i don't you know there's certain things i can think of and there's certain things that i've come up with and ideas and stuff like that but stuff like this isn't in my wheelhouse. So I love when other people are out there doing it and I'm more than happy to throw my support, my time, my money, whatever behind them in order to try he's to... Just, he's just a journeyman memetic... Mem- <laughs> mem- Memetician. Memetist. You know, there's, there's one other Memetican. aspect of this... There's one other aspect of this that I should mention also is the rating system. So let me describe what the uh, what the traveler would go through, and then what the um, wh- what the host would see. Uh, and 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 let me just kind of describe what the two people happen. So so um, so the traveler would set up a profile, and this is a private profile. Nobody can get to it unless he decides that they can get to it. So the traveler sets up, up sets up a profile. It has things like. Um, you know, uh, is he a smoker? Is he allergic to cats or pets or something? Or, you know, uh, does he need? Does he have any special needs? Is he? Uh, you know, it, it's all customized to to the traveler. Only the information that somebody would need in order to evaluate whether or not he should be tra- he should be um, you know staying in their home perhaps if that's what the if that's what the host is doing. Now the host sets up a similar um, profile that nobody can see. And in it, it says, uh, you know, okay, so we have w- one room, or maybe we have two rooms. We have one room with one bed and, and the second room with two beds, or however, whatever their arrangement is. Maybe they only have a couch. Maybe they only have a, you know, a spot in the living room, whatever. Um, and then they say uh, the house is a smoking house or the house is a non-smoking house. But if, if it's a non-smoking house, does it have... Uh, a a covered area outside, you know, a porch or something. Yes, it does or no, it doesn't. And is there a, uh, the house is a pet's house or what? You know, all the all the things. How far are we from the interstate? How far, you know, all these different things. How much parking is there? And so they fill out their part of the profile, and it stays private. Now the traveler decides I want to travel on these specific dates, and I want to go to this city, and I want to go to that city. So he plugs that into his uh, into his app. And it sort of applies, and 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 the app looks at the possible uh, matches to that profile, 
And when and let's say it comes up with uh, let's say there's one town is uh, you know Birmingham and it comes up with five possible matches. So it shares his profile with those five uh, possible hosts. So the hosts get a ding on their app and they look at it and you know they might say ah no good I've got somebody booked that day or we're going to be from away from the house that weekend I can't let the house just be empty with some stranger in it <laughs> or whatever the reasons are. Well, you know, or or or, if, or if, you know what? If you want to go that way, I mean, you talk about other things you can do with it. You could do how you know you could do how you could set up house sitting that way. If you're somebody who you is, could, yeah, so, so yeah, somebody absolutely. who is trusting like that, but not not to take you or off your point. Maybe, <laughs> maybe the uh, maybe the host, the homeowner, looks at the uh, at the traveler and goes, "I know who that guy is. I see him on Facebook all the time. He's a jerk. I don't want him in my house." Well, then they just reject it. They don't have to say why they're rejecting it. They just reject it. And the traveler never even knows that they rejected it. it. That information never goes to the traveler. He doesn't really need to know that. But the the host, let's say, out of the five hosts in Birmingham, let's say three of them are like, yeah, yeah, that, that would work for us. Okay. And so they open their profile to the traveler. So the traveler gets a, a notice. He's got three dings three different profiles and he looks at him he's like yeah that one's near the convention center that's good this one's near the airport that would be handy that guy's way out of town I don't think I'm gonna take that one and so he's able to figure out which of those that are available that he wants and then he accepts and the app books for him now in that process the traveler sees the rating of the of the host and the host sees the rating of the traveler before they make the before they agree upon the connection so if this traveler has been getting a lot of bad ratings, then there's a reason why, and people can have notes, and you can read it and figure out whether or not you, you know, why is he having bad ratings? And if, you know, like if something happened that's explainable, he has a chance to explain himself in it. So it's a lot like, you know, it's a lot like the rating systems that we see in other uh, modern Internet um, situations where trading and, and sales and things are taking place. Uh, you have a chance to rate somebody and tell why you're giving them that, that rating, and they have a, cha a chance to, you know, fix the problem or, uh, or dispute it and say that wasn't even me. I wasn't even there. Whatever. So that's that wasn't part even of the aspect house. of the rating. Yeah. <laughs> huh. It's your fault. You went down the street to the wrong house. I told you 114. You went to 214. Yeah, and you wondered why uh, they threw you threw you out and punched you. I mean, come on now. You know? <laughs> numbers people anyway so that was just one thing now the other thing I wanted to throw out was um, for the you know the lefty uh, anarch uh, commie anarchists that are out there that are used to traveling across Europe and sleeping in hostels and and uh, or maybe going up and down the um, Appalachian Trail and you know sleeping under a tree or whatever this could still work for hosts that want to host that type of travelers. So let's say the host is a lefty communist type person, and he is willing to give up, you know, a, a, an area in his garage for the weekend or whatever, um, and and would like to have another commie anarchist in his house. <laughs> then we're not going to stop it. We won't even know. Just have fun. Knock yourselves out. Be commies all you want. <laughs> Whether 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 you be a leftist anarchist commie or you know or or just a go regular garden variety status commie you know the red or the blue it doesn't matter <laughs> Any, you know if you want to use it go right ahead you know yeah it's 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 uh, it's, it's like freedom I mean, of speech hey, exactly it's 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 geared hey, if towards you can get our some commies to pay for an app I'm down <laughs> if you can get them to participate in capitalism I'm I'm all go for gung, gung ho for it. <laughs> well, that's why I, I don't want to knock them too hard, you know. Because hey, it's six dollars to get in to visit Karl Marx's grave. Like you can't even walk in that thing for free. <laughs> that's hilarious. So, that I mean, is, I've seen no, the meme no, no. About it's that. like I don't. I, is yeah, that actually like, true? I never actually verified that. Yes, I it's just, very true. I I assumed it 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 could it would be hard to you know if, if it was disputable it would have been already you know been disputed already but that is hysterical <laughs> but there's a meme flying flying around with uh, a pic uh, it's a it's a uh, statue of stalin being taken down and the cable slips and beheads stalin have you seen that one yeah yeah no, i haven't seen that one <laughs> it's yeah, on yeah, a loop it's, they're, you can, they're you can moving just it. sit it yeah 
It's poetic justice, I guess. So. You you can watch you can watch Stalin's head popping off just time after time <laughs> after time after time. It's beautiful. Oh yeah, it's like they got a chain wrapped around the middle of like a Stalin statue, uh, Jeremy, and then like they're trying to pull it off to the side, and it like the chain just slips all the way up to the neck, and like <laughs> dangles for a second, and then the bottom snaps off, and it's just perfect. Nice. <laughs> I'll have to look that up. Oh, Ooh, great study, stuff. Smart phones dirtier than toilets wash your smartphones guys oh i've <laughs> i've seen that plenty of times yeah because most people are on their phones all day and doesn't you know they touch a million other things in between and not yeah, that many people the bathroom with them yeah not that many people yeah exactly plenty of people use their phones in the bat in the bathroom <laughs> and not <laughs> enough people wash the, and not enough people wash their hands with any regularity so of course, your phones are going to be disgusting. Mine's only hey, uh, half. Uh, uh, I was just going to say, my, mine's only halfway decent because uh, I because of my OCD and anytime there's fingerprints on the screen, it drives me nuts. So I wipe my phone down at least every at least once every half hour. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Ben. You were going to say? Oh, I was going to jump back and uh, and do some more self promotion. Oh, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> well, that's what you're here for, Ben. So go right ahead. away, man. So when I when, when my wife were when my wife and I were on the road in our RV traveling, and I was doing the research or part of the research for the third part of my book, um, we were bouncing from farm to farm in central Missouri, and we were being hosted by some um, interesting characters. Let's put it that way, that were associated <laughs> with some interesting groups and some uh, activists very outside of what our circles would be considered but they have farms mm -hmm. and they have beautiful big expensive barns and they have you know nice level slabs with 220 plug in and, and water and they have a place where you can dump your your black tanks and they have like oh, all nice. the stuff that that you need and we moved from farm to farm like that, and, and I got to meet and talk with some people, um, well, I guess you can say militia types and, and biker, uh, some hardcore one percenter type uh, bikers. And one of them actually owned a, a campground. This is a weird little story. This, this biker owned a campground, and he kept it pretty full all the time, but he didn't pay his income tax uh, regularly. Oh, so he, for so shame. He had been, so he had been fighting with the IRS for like I don't know I think I think if I recall what he was saying it was like 12 years or something that he had been not paying and fighting them legally and um so he invited us there you know to to stay for free and to talk to him and interview him and so that he could be a part of this project and uh but where he put us at it was like across the street and down this hollow underneath these real heavy canopy of trees there was it was almost like a second secret campground that you couldn't see from the road and uh, and it was right up against the state park which was part of the interest of why the IRS wanted his property so bad oh of course um, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway th that Expansion. was that was another that was another place where we stayed and if if we would have had this app it would have made it really handy as it was it was kind of clumsy it was like well you know this guy tells us well i think that guy over there will want to host you guys let me get with him and see if he see if you can actually drive your rv back into that area and you know and and there was some some clumsiness about it and and also and this there's not much we can do about this with the app but there's a section of missouri that's just about geographically in the dead center like if you just drew a target right in the center of Missouri that's huge, that has no cell, uh, they have cell towers. This is the weird part. But we had at the time, we had Verizon and we had, oh boy, I can't remember the other one. Anyway, we had two different carriers and, and we couldn't get any internet or for a hotspot or any cell phone coverage from this huge area right in the center of Missouri. And it's right around, there's a whole bunch of prisons it's a spooky number of prisons and and youth camps, you know, um, all in the same area and a, a nuclear power plant, all all in this huddle, oh, wow, in this giant dead zone. And but there is cell towers. So what this tells me is that the cell towers 
are you know like government communications only for the prisons and the and the power government bill. communication only i'll tell you that <laughs> <laughs> i'm holding the paperwork in my hands right now i got the documents to prove that they're from the moon phobos uh sorry <laughs> <laughs> there's an underground chamber thank you alex <laughs> oh man but yeah, so we would have to when we were in when we were camping in that area, we, I would have to take my laptop and my phone and my hotspot and get in the car and drive for like 20 minutes to get out to where there was a cell tower that I could actually log on to and, and use and get out and talk to the world and you wow. know update my email and all that kind of thing. And then back into the blackness. <laughs> That's how, that's how I felt when I was at Porkfest this past year because I, I was like one of the only people that didn't have service because Sprint apparently doesn't work up there anywhere in like for like a good tw like 15, 20 miles. Like there's little patches where it works, but for the most part, it doesn't work through a huge chunk of the entire state. So I, I understand. Yeah, T-Mobile also yeah. is like that up there. That's who we had in uh, in Missouri and they were useless just about. That's interesting. That yeah, well, because I mean, I can't imagine too many people live regularly in that giant section of where all those prisons and the nuclear power plant is. So there's really no need for it. And whatever the government has, they probably have much better than that. <laughs> it is kind of funny though that there were farms there that were farming that were growing um, things that were not corn and not soybeans, and they were not uh, apple trees. You know, they were growing things right there underneath the nose. <laughs> and, hmm. and 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 they took they were happy to sh take me out and show me oh yeah come over here look at this wow. and on one t one trip um we got in a a, a four-wheel drive pickup three of us we drove and now here's the thing so like i have really good dead red reckoning and i i have a real good sense of of magnetic north and um I, and i just don't get lost i mean i just it doesn't happen so we're driving around, and it became really obvious to me after about 15 or 20 minutes that we were essentially driving in big figure eights. And it just, you know, they were doing their best to, to make sure that I didn't know where we were. And so uh, I'm not sure, maybe I shouldn't tell. Now they're not on the internet, so they don't even, there's no way they could hear this. So anyway, um, the dude that I'm talking about. He he doesn't have any computer his, computers in his house, and he won't allow smartphones or anything. So he's real he's real paranoid about this kind of thing. Um, Sounds but like so my we drove. Guy. <laughs> so we drove around in these big figure eights all over through these fields and around hills and stuff, and then come around the corner and bang! Right there's this huge patch, and uh, I get out and pose with my rifle and took a picture and. You know, and, and then we get back in and we drive again for another like 30, 40 minutes and here's another patch, you know, and, and I could, I could tell from dead reckoning and just kind of watching the hills and everything that we were essentially leaving the same field and then coming back to another part of it. And I could kind of just give a general idea of, of knowing where we were. And then I, of course I get back to the RV. What am I going to do? I'm going to look in Google and see if I can see these things. And they had they had nestled them in under trees enough to where absolutely looking at Google, if you did not know what you were looking at, you'd never know what you were looking at. Now I'm sure if they went over with a helicopter and knew a pretty good idea of what to look for and where to look, they'd yeah. probably spot them. But um, I think even a regular Passover with a helicopter, because they're they're growing, they would only grow like two plants in one location and then one plant in another location and they were very fastidious about making sure that they were only female plants and that there were no male plants within a pollinating area if any of that makes any sense well sure yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> well that's what you operations have to, uh, yeah that's what you have to do you spread things out like that and then they don't that yeah, well the heat signature can't be seen from a passover by a yeah, yeah everyone knows that yeah, yep. well, that's well. Not not ever, again. You, you say that so so oh. flippantly, and unfortunately, there there are plenty <laughs> I knew of people. That when I was Twelve years old. <laughs> there's plenty. There's plenty of people that don't know that. You know, there's the generation just above mine, I guess, that a lot of them still haven't gotten you know figured all this stuff out because it came in much later. <laughs> you know, I just thought it was hilarious that all this was done so close underneath the nose of authority. You know, well, that's always the best. Really. That's go ahead. I was just gonna say that's that's usually the best place to do it. I learned that a long time ago. I mean, when I worked at the Seven Eleven for a couple of years, way back when I was like nineteen, twenty years old, there was the seventh precinct of Nassau County was 
direct, pretty much directly across the street from our store. And the cops came in all the time to get free coffee. And they, you know, a lot of them tried <laughs> to push for free other stuff too. Although my boss, thankfully, uh, cared more about more about money than kissing up to the cops. So he would like, you know, come out and be like, I'm sorry, I just can't, you know, you know got to pay bills yada yada you know yada 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 so not so we didn't get flack for it but there was people doing uh i mean while i worked there before i worked there and i heard tell after i worked there too i mean there was people dealing uh cocaine out of the bathroom there was people dealing weed uh out of the the vault um and there was people doing stuff directly in front of the in this in the store in front of the store which is correctly across the street and it was always the best place because if the cops came in you knew they were coming in just to get food they weren't really paying attention to anything else and yep. and, if, and for any other calls they got they were taking off immediately in different directions so they were nowhere near the store so everybody knew it was one of the safest places to do things hide in plain sight exactly <laughs> I think it sticks in my mind that there's a uh, that there's a um, uh, uh, Arthur Corn Arthur Conan Doyle. Um, what's the sleuth that he had that he did the uh, is, is he Sherlock uh, the detective? Say it again. Was he Sherlock Holmes? Right. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sherlock Holmes. It seems to me like there was a, 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 a Sherlock Holmes situation where something was hidden in plain sight on his desk or on the murder victim's desk or something like that. And uh, and nobody could find it because it was just laying right out in the open where where anybody would see it, but it looked like something else. I can't remember the details now. I haven't read that stuff for you know like twenty years or something. So yes, but the idea still holds. <laughs> right, it's right. All, it's often the best. Yeah, but that, that I mean, you, you, like you said, on, at first glance you would think, oh, that's so weird, so close. How could they do that? But you know, I think that principle kind of follows through. It's or you know. Something like that, they could not necessarily care about. You know, there's, I mean, there's more than enough evidence to suggest that the uh, United States government really doesn't care about certain drugs or certain things being grown or brought in or whatever. As long as they can find some way to benefit off of it, they don't really care. <laughs> yeah, like the like that dude's uh, RV park that was nestled up against the state property against the state uh, park. That, that makes it really attractive for them to come and take. Well, exactly. That's that's, that's more important to them. They want the properties. So. <laughs> but but I I do like that. I, I mean that idea though. Like like you said. I mean if you had if you had had this type of app back then, it might have been th you might have had an easier go of things. And it's interesting because you know we keep talking about different ways you could use this and expand it just from you know essentially the B and B aspect of it, but. You know, I mean, that's something that I have talked about wanting to do when I finally get out of this hellhole of a state <laughs> and finally start <laughs> moving more westward, uh, which is still I'm trying to do within the next year or so. Uh, there has been a couple of hiccups, but hopefully uh, we can still work that out and get out of here. But part of, you know, getting out there and getting a huge piece of property to do a farm on is to have more land to do was to do this type of thing anyway, to either have a spot where I could host a festival of sorts or that people could rent out and use and setting up my own slabs or, or and and setting up my own you know uh, power connections so people can uh, come do that uh was in was kind of in the idea it works anyway that was in, that was the ideas i had and this would be a perfect way for me to help promote that <laughs> so again <laughs> this is uh this i i can i i mean i'm sure people use the outlet will, while you have it well exactly I think uh, hey, I, I think it's a great idea. <laughs> so I forgot to mention something earlier when I was thanking you guys for uh, uh, Jeremy. You guys th did all the the recording on that uh, audio book, uh, audio version of my book. I meant to specifically thank the guys at Liberty Under Attack because uh, mm -hmm. uh, they're hosting Shane. one of the copies of it. Shane, yeah, Shane, Shane Radliff, uh, yes. He he did a lot of the organization and getting all the you know getting all the cats going in the same direction and yes um, I really appreciate that I mean yeah you know words I, I really can't express how much I appreciate you guys doing that that was really it really touched my heart well I've I've told you before to me it was it was an honor I mean it was something that I all I know I I know pretty much everybody involved I, I think actually everybody involved i know is, are huge fans of yours you know your written work and your podcast if you, if so it was just kind of something like 
as soon as Shane brought the, because I had talked about doing, I had thought about doing it. I had mentioned it to a couple of people. Then all of a sudden Shane presented it, the idea to a bunch of us uh, on, in a small face group group we're in. And right away, a bunch of the, you know, a bunch of the fiends and a bunch of the fiend fans immediately jumped on it. Like, yes, when do you, when do you need things by, when do you want to do this? How do we do this? So uh, we're just, I'm just, and I want in on the next book. Yeah, definitely. Yes. I want to start audio books, well, uh, doing voices for audio books, like reading them. Like, Well, you can do that right now, Dave. There, there, uh, there's actually a thing on Amazon that you I can sign. I don't know what book to you read. Can, like someone, if you're, if Dave, you're, a, if you're, a, if, you're a, if you write books, call me. I'll Dave, do it. well, you can, you can, there's a, there's a thing on Amazon that you can sign up for right now where you can list uh, your information and people can actually uh, pick you and uh, have you audition or you can audition for their audiobooks and it doesn't cost you anything. Uh, I forget the name of it offhand. I'll find it and put it in the show notes. But uh, I signed up for that and was uh, there's just a whole bunch of books out there that people are willing to pay money for if you can if they like your your uh, sample that you give them. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you can do that right now, Dave. You don't have to wait. <laughs> But yeah. Anyway, so yeah, for me it was a, uh, it was I, I was glad to take part in that. And we're uh, we're just, I mean, I'm just thrilled that you were uh, that you were happy with it, and uh, and then of course Michael Michael De- Michael uh, Dean of the Freedom Fiends was <laughs> nice enough to uh, remaster it and make it sound even better. <laughs> So, no, no, no. Cash Newman did that. Cash Newman. Cash oh, Newman. okay. I, I'm sorry. I, I got, I got, I got that screwed up. <laughs> I'm sure he'll forget. Well, they me. look very similar. Yeah, it's, it, I, I always get them confused. Very confusing. It's kind of like with my kids. Yeah. You know, I got the identical twin. So I, you know, I, it's, <laughs> sometimes you know, in certain light, it's hard to tell. But anyway, Michael and Michael and his identical cousin. <laughs> yes. His so, exactly. um, well, what was that? The here, Patty Duke? Was that the Pat? Was that the yeah. one cousins? <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, as the uh, Church of the Immaculate Secession wraps up, do we uh, do we pass the plate at this point, or do we do a hymn first? Uh, <laughs> well, uh, I, you, I, you send all donations to our Bitcoin address, and uh, we'll make sure that God gets our—I mean, uh, that uh, freedom gets them. Yes. Well, they will go to <laughs> freedom. So the yeah. la- we're, we're we're still working the language out. Sorry, there's there's some things we're gonna. <laughs> yes, we we're gonna rewrite our. We had to re- re- rewrite our own Bible, right? I think that was something we talked about a couple episodes ago. So, <laughs> um, you just change a period or something in the Bible? <laughs> no, no, no. I think well, I'd, you know, I'd be taking a weed you, whacker you to do, it. You could do like the Book of Mormon and just have a vision, and where an angel tells you, and you just write a whole new thing. Well, an that's kind of told me that paying taxes goes against God. An angel, a, a large dose of of psychedelic <laughs> mushrooms, you know, whatever. It's something. <laughs> something will speak to me. I'm sure. There's It'll a be. church in 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 my in the one of the towns I live in that you can become a member of, and they can't legally prosecute you for doing pretty much what they call sacraments or whatever. And it's like a hundred dollars a year to be a member. I'm thinking about joining. <laughs> Well, that goes back to what you were talking about earlier, Dave. Sometimes you do have to play the game in order to uh, get along. Uh, and unfortunately, because, well, you're not really given many, many other choices. So uh, I, I can understand that. But It just depends on what you want to do personally, I believe. But yeah, of course. Right. All right. So we probably should get wrapping up, though. So, But before we get going, Ben, uh, it was great having you on. It was great getting to talk to you again. And uh, please... Have anything else you want to say before we get closing out? And uh, of course, plug away, plug away, plug away for the Freedom B and B app. <laughs> yeah, um, be sure and check it out at Indiegogo Freedom Bed, the letter N Breakfast, and uh, check out uh, Paul Rosenberg's new little book, fifty-five pages, the New Age of Intelligence. And if you haven't seen it, my book is Sedition, Subversion, and Sabotage Field Manual Number One: A Three-Part Solution to the State. There's a free downloadable PDF or a free audio version, or you can actually buy the uh, paperback version of it. It's like 10 bucks plus shipping. And, um, um, and thanks to Liberty Under Attack for uh, organizing this and everything, Shane over there, and all the work. And guys, thanks for having me back on. Dave, it was great talking to you again. And Jeremy, it's always good talking to you. Um, I missed... Uh, Go ahead. When I say you're always welcome to come on, I mean that literally. <laughs> Even if I you want to take my that. spot, you can, <laughs> if you want to come on and talk. Oh gosh! Any, anytime anybody gets to take Dave's spot, I'm all for that. <laughs> oh yeah, Jeremy is he just ext- he's beside himself. <laughs> I was looking forward to talking to Andre, but uh, didn't work out. So that's yeah. okay. Yeah, maybe next time. But. 
Yeah, well, he's yeah. a backslider in the Church of the Immaculate Secession. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to show uh, up for uh, for mass or whatever we're calling this. Yeah, might, might, might be some lashings involved. We're gonna have to work that out. But, so, all right, great. Um, and again, say I'll, five Reed Roth bards and, and and we'll let you go. <laughs> yeah. Reed Roth bards. Uh, yeah. So, like I said, I'll, I'll put I'll put all this stuff in the show notes. And please, please, please go check out the Indiegogo campaign, for people, and consider just. Even even a dollar, you know, we're not like mauling you here. Two dollars is not going to two dollars is not going to offend us. Uh, you know, the, all, the, all the people here, guys. Come on, you can afford that. Hey, no, no, no. Just for the don't. That. Just for the just for the Indiegogo campaign right now. We're talking about just oh. to, just to get things well, up and running. You know. Oh yeah, go all, in there and give Ben a few dollars. Yeah. Do it. So. Hey Dave, uh, um, they're not called. Uh, uh, what did you call it? Reed Moth, Reed Rothbard. They're yeah. called yeah. Um, Hail Murray's. Hail Murray's. Hail Murray's. <laughs> you have to, yeah, you have to say say your Hail Murray's. I need you to say you rub, five Hail Murray's. Well, you rub silver bullion. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, you look at Ron Paul's image on silver bullion, and you rub his face and say Hail uh, Murray's. And, and and you're holding a copy of Democracy: The God That Failed. Just yeah, <laughs> rocking. <laughs> Oh, hey guys, oh thanks for having me on. Seriously, I, I really enjoyed this. Uh, you're well. I, I oh, will echo Dave. You're definitely welcome anytime, Ben. So this this was great. Uh, all right, uh, Dave. Anything before we get closing out? No, uh, just uh, uh, as always. Thank you, uh, Ben, for coming on, and Jeremy for doing this show with me. And uh, you know, I appreciate everyone that listens and supports our show. Uh, it, it's it's fun to do it every time. I, it's like a, a roller coaster. I, I have a great time every time. Yes. All right. Well, this has been the Seeds of Liberty podcast. All of our information can be found at theseedsofliberty.com. And we will catch you next time. Peace. from the Freedom Teens Radio Show. I've run websites since 1996 and have used over a dozen web hosts in that time. Agoristhosting.com is the only one that hasn't broken my heart. Agorist Hosting's uptime and service is stellar, and their DDoS mitigation is the best I've seen. That's important because if you tell the truth in this world, you'll ruffle feathers. No matter what the haters hit us with, Agorist Hosting keeps our websites online. If you have a mission-critical commercial presence or a world-changing activism site, go with Agoristhosting.com. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists who think you need a government permission slip for everything? Everything you do is an A to B conversation and the government should see their way out of it. Create true free markets by adopting the Bipcot No Government License. The Bipcot No Gov License allows user modification of any product, service, or software except by governments or government agents. Go to Bipcot.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango.org.